Okay, so a small hive beetle and a honeybee went into a bar. The bee said, I'm buying. They got their drinks and sat down, and then the small hive beetle crapped in the drinks and the honeybee left. That's not very funny, huh? <laughs> Today we're going to talk about how the, the small hive beetles trick the honeybees. <laughs> Beekeeping is such a wonderful occupation, such a wonderful thing to do. Can't call it an occupation for me anyway, but it's a great hobby. The bees are just wonderful. I love them. It's harder for beekeepers now than it was several years ago. Now, unfortunately, my father didn't keep bees as far as I know. My grandfather didn't. Um, I wish I had had a mentor when I was a kid because it would have been great, but beekeeping was a lot easier years ago than it is now. Why do I say that? We have challenges that our parents who were beekeepers didn't have, okay? Um, the varroa mites, those things just decimate our colonies. It's the biggest threat we have. And yet, they've only been here since the 80s. Today, we're talking about small hive beetles. They've been here. Well, they were first found in the United States in 1996, so it's not that long ago. But with the small hive beetles, okay, a little bit about them first. They are native to sub-Saharan Africa, and they get on all right with the African honeybees. Um, they, they live together. They grew up together. Then, they, then globalization happened, and they spread all over the world. They're all over the place, just like varroa mites. We have them worse down here in the southern climates than our brothers and sisters who up north, but they found their way up into the northern states as well. Okay. Now, small hive beetles, okay, here, here's what they look like. They're little black. I kind of think of them looking like ladybugs, maybe a little thicker. These ones here I took out of some of my beetle barns, my beetle traps. Um, they infest our hives. If your hive is strong, if you have a strong colony, they'll chase them and not let them get into much trouble. They'll, they'll bring them all up to the top of the box and they'll actually make beetle jails. Okay. The beetles, they'll pupate in the ground and then when they're adults, they fly up. They can smell the pollen and the honey and they'll zero right into your beehive, okay? In nature, down in Africa, they'll also live on rotting fruit, but they really like to get into beehives. That's their preferred thing here in the States. Okay, the adult small hive beetle lays its eggs inside the colony, inside the box. If you have a crack where the wood pieces don't fit all the way perfectly together, they'll lay them in the cracks. If you have, you know, like divots, imperfections, if your equipment's old and beat up and sloppy, they'll have a lot of places they can lay their eggs. If they can't find a decent place to egg to lay their eggs, they'll actually burrow into the capped brood, and that female small hive beetle will deposit her eggs inside with the developing bee inside the capped brood. Okay. Now. Inside the hive, the bees aren't happy with them. They can't sting them because their bodies are too hard. But the beetles will bite on them. They got sharp mandibles and they'll bite them and they'll run them around. If your beehive, if your colony is strong, it's not too much of a problem because what they'll do is they'll herd the small hive beetles to a specific location, usually up at the very top of the box, and they'll build a propolis wall around them and they'll corral them. They'll actually build a beetle jail, okay? And the hive will actually assign certain honeybees to be the jailers. And those bees, that's all they'll do is they'll prevent the bees, I'm sorry, they'll prevent the small hive beetles from escaping the jail. 
And if any of them get away, they'll, they'll run out and grab them, they'll bite them, and they'll push them back, and they'll put them back in the jail. But nature is interesting. The small hive beetles have evolved a little bit, and they figured out that while they're in the jail, they can walk up close to the jailer bees, and if they strike, if they stroke their mouth parts, it's a natural reaction. It's the same thing that the young bees do inside the, inside the, the brood ch chamber, and the bees will regurgitate food and actually feed the bees. So that bee, it'll go up there, it'll get the bee to feed it, and then it'll go back down and sit there and scheme and wait for a chance to make the jailbreak. <laughs> okay, small hive beetles. What do they do? If your colony starts declining in numbers, if your colony becomes weak for some reason, the beetles will get away from the bees. They'll get away from their jailers and they'll go all through the box, okay? They will tunnel their way through the honey and brood and they'll actually slime your, your honey and brood. They'll defecate in the honey, which will turn the honey dark colored and make it ferment. Okay, so what happens when all these, and, and that'll, that'll ruin, when it gets so bad with, with fermented honey and bad smells and slimed uh, frames of comb and all that, the bees will leave. They will abscond. So sometimes you'll, abs you'll look in there at your bee colony and they're all gone and they just couldn't stand the conditions. So they moved out. They left. Okay. All right. So the beetle eggs hatch into these grub looking larvas and so these white worm grub looking larvae are just disgusting everywhere and, and that's when they'll slime the place and make it bad at some point the larva from the small high beetle will make its way out and down to the ground okay in once they're going to the ground they'll burrow down into the ground for a period of time between 21 days to 35 days and then after they've cooked in the ground for a while they'll dig their way out as adult small high beetles and they'll fly and they'll start sniffing around looking for your beehives to go back and repeat the process now because of the way that works what a lot of people do is underneath the colonies um, you can spray, well, you can put down water that has nematodes in it. And the nematodes will go down into the ground and they'll multiply and they'll kill the small hive beetle uh, larvae that are in the ground. Um, some people will actually put down concrete pads or rocks and things so there's no ground for the beetles. These strategies work, but unfortunately, the beetles, I mean, the small hive beetle larvae can actually travel pretty far as long as the bird doesn't pick them off. And so sometimes even if you put nematodes and stuff around the colony, sometimes people put diatomaceous earth and such. Um, the beetles, if, they'll, if they come out into the grass, they'll still fly back to the hive once they're adults. So it's a strategy. It works a little bit. So what do I do about them? All right. You've seen some of my videos. I think if you were to watch my video about uh, candy cane, <laughs> candy cane, um, peppermint patty candy, peppermint candy, you will see how I do my strategy. What I do though is I will put the candy up in there. Now the bees will eat the candy, so it doesn't really last long in a strong hive. <laughs> they'll eat, they'll eat it pretty quick, so you got to be on top of it. But the beetles don't like the smell of the candy, and so they'll, they'll stay away from it. But I, I also put in beetle barns because the, the, um, the candy goes away between my hive inspections. So on the colony I've been working on while I was talking here, um, I had quite a few beetles in it. And it's just that I hadn't been in that box for a couple of weeks. And of course the candy was all the consumed. And so the beetle barns, what happens with the beetle barns is they'll propolis up the end, the entrances. So after a week or so, the beetle barns are no longer effective either. So it's just a matter of staying on top of 
the way you take care of your pests here. All right, well, I'm going to let it go at that. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, of a thing. I, it just amazes me how the bees and the other creatures work. But can you imagine if you are an invasive species from another country that comes here and has a different species of honeybee as something that you are attracted to, and then figuring out how to make that honeybee feed you as it incarcerates you. Amazing, amazing. Bees are such wonderful creatures. Well, I hope that was informative, but that's not the whole picture. Now, in order to really see a good way for you to take care of your own beehives, you need to watch this video right here, the Peppermint Candy Challenge. You need to see that. All right, this is Bruce. I'll see you next time.